आपके स्टाफ पे क्या है तीन
start of the proceedings, it's my privilege to invite Ms. Sumi Parnaratna, Assistant General uh, Manager, Research and Development, Lincoln University, Sri Lanka, to deliver the work of address. Over to you, Ms. Sumi. Very good morning to all of you. It is my utmost privilege to welcome you all for the inauguration ceremony of the 2023 intake of the Department of Pharmacy at the University of Sri Lanka branch campus. We are much honored to have an elite panel of the Appetite Table today, which I'm sure will be a great inspiration to all our students who are waiting to begin their education and journey with us. Professor Veranja Karunaratna, Vice Chancellor of Slink with Academy, our chief guest for the day. I warmly welcome you and thank you for taking time off your busy schedule to be with us here today. Professor Shivani Homavanya Singha, Professor of Surgery, University of Warwick Medical School and University Hospitals, Coventry and Warwickshire. Our guest of honor, and I personally had the privilege to work with you as well. So it's indeed a great opportunity for all of us at Lincoln to have a personality of your caliber with us here seated today. I'm aware of your busy schedule whenever you come to Sri Lanka. Thank you very much for accepting my invitation. I also take this opportunity to welcome Mr. Ajit Vilakaratna, Chairman of the Society of Government Pharmacists Association, Sri Lanka, for this event today, along with Mr. Jana Pitsinanayaka, Deputy General Secretary. Thank you, and your presence at this ceremony is much appreciated. Over to our virtual guests. Dr. Roshan Talima, Director of Lincoln University of Sri Lanka. Sir, I welcome you to this ceremony. And I'm very sad that you cannot, you could not have been here physically um, at this hall today with the same ceremony. And I also take this opportunity to acknowledge and congratulate on the new collaboration that you brought in with this current visit of yours with the government of Cambodia, the expansions of the economic. I also want to welcome Mr. Devantara, PR officer from Lincoln University, who is also currently alongside Dr. Roshan um, at the um, collaboration visit. Uh, Dr. Srimoy Khan with us, the Deputy Dean for the Department of Pharmacy at Lincoln University, Malaysia. I want to welcome you as well, and I'm happy that you joined in virtually. And your presence here today will definitely add more trust on the collaboration we have with Lincoln University, Malaysia. I also take this opportunity to welcome Mr. Shana Karanga, additional general manager for the University of Sri Lanka, Dr. Kumarika Samanti, head of the Department of Pharmacy for the University of Sri Lanka, the management staff, faculty, academic advisors, non-academic staff of Lincoln University for this inauguration ceremony. To the parents and family, I'm sure there are a few. I warmly welcome you on behalf of Lincoln University of Sri Lanka. Finally, to all our students who are ready to start this journey with us, you are our biggest asset. So we definitely hope that you all will enjoy this journey with Lincoln University, and we will stand to fulfill your educational dreams in the next couple of years. Thank you, and have a pleasant day. There's a short video presentation. Please enjoy.
for the wife coming out. <laughs> it is my humble honor to invite Dr. Roshan Delina, the country director of Lincoln University, Malaysia, to Sri Lanka to introduce Lincoln University. Dr. Roshan completed his bachelor's degree from the University of Avenida and has obtained his MPhil from the University of Kaisu. He is also armed with a doctorate from the Lincoln University, Malaysia. He is a dual qualified and experienced in field of information technology and business management with several years of managerial experience. He has also worked in selling a group of companies under the areas of training, business research, and consultancy. And he has also served as the head of operations person at Selenco Commodity Exchange Limited. Dr. Roshan Alima is currently the country director of Lincoln University, Malaysia. Over to you, sir. Um, so you can share your screen. I can. Uh, right. So can you share my presentation if you don't mind, please? I'm having little difficulties. Mr. Winnie, am I audible? Am I audible, please? Um, sir? Am I audible? No, audible. Am I audible, please? Uh, yes, we can hear you. All right. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, good morning to all of you. And uh, it's a great privilege, in fact, uh, uh, joining this wonderful moment. Um, first and foremost, I would like to thank uh, our <clears throat> head of department, Dr. Upamalika, putting up this wonderful event, gathering, online as well as physical. So before I move forward, I would like to warmly welcome Dr. Sri Moy, the Deputy Dean. Then I do have my colleagues over there. And also our guest of honor, uh, Professor Shavanti Omar. It's a pleasure to have you. And also our chief um, guest. Dr. Roshan, just uh, give us a few minutes. Uh, we are experiencing a short uh, technical issue. Just give us, just give us, give us. All right.
Uh, sir, can you hear me? You can talk now. All right. <clears throat> Am I audible and visible? Both? Yes, sir. Yes, both. Right. Thank you very much. So, um, uh, okay, I'll start from the beginning, right? I think uh, I was not audible. So, first and foremost, <coughs> would like to add the, add the greetings of the day because uh, it's basically good morning over there <coughs> and uh, good afternoon to me. Ayubhuvan and Vanakkam for the students who are joining in our country. Thank you for inviting me. First and foremost, would like to thank Dr. Humalika, department, head of department of our branch campus, who has put this platform, it's a wonderful event. Uh, the hard work, I know, you know, it's not that what you see behind. It's like an iceberg. What you see is very little. And deep down, it's quite complicated. So I know that. So I would like to thank her for that. And also would like to warmly welcome uh, the um, faculty dean, deputy dean of the faculty, Dr. Sri Moy, who will be joining from Malaysia. Uh, also, the guest of honor. Professor Shaminti, Homer, who had come down to our branch campus. Warmly welcome you uh, to our branch campus. And also our chief guest, uh, Professor Karuna Ratna. We would like to warmly welcome you uh, to this ceremony. And also, my dear colleagues over there who had worked hard to organize this moment. So I'm always told uh, it has been a pleasure always to work with the Government Pharmacy Association. I think we uh, have Mr. Ajit Tirakaratna who had come all the way from Anuradhapura. Uh, I'm very, I was, I'm very humble, and I'm, I'm, I'm quite uh, thankful to him because I know he, he was with me in Cambodia a few days ago, a couple of days ago, before I arrived to Malaysia. He had landed in Sri Lanka, gone back to Anuradhapura, come back to Colombo. I would like to thank him for that commitment, and also a general secretary who has been quite helpful to us, Government Pharmacy Association. I saw the gentleman over there. Distinguished members. Last, not the least, our additional general manager, Mr. Channa Taranga, who has been the who is being on the driving seat, who is driving the branch campus. And my dear colleagues, I know there are a lot of involvement of many staff members. I could, if I pick names, it takes time. So I would browse through few that I could recall at now, given the time. So from my side, what we have done here, I must be thankful first and foremost to the Government Pharmacy Association because we have been working with them in the sense we have been involved in capacity building for government pharmacists to upgrade themselves into a degree for the last two years. We had a lot of debates. There were a lot of discussions among ourselves and among the community. 
how we could leverage extend this opportunity towards the external pharmacist registered pharmacist to embark on capacity building in the other way how to complete a bachelor degree because in today's context as professionals we all know that we are in a turbulent environment that means the country is in a turbulent environment people who are living there are disturbed lives are disturbed so therefore people are panicked looking for alternatives searching for alternatives while i am speaking i was told i am not sure pretty sure about the statistics 300 to 400 people are leaving the country per day so and also there is a huge backlog at the immigration department in sri lankan context to leave the country because i myself wanted my passport to get a new passport because i am running short of papers in my pages in my passport so i had to wait for about 2 to 3 months get an appointment from the immigration department to fix the passport so that gives an indication where we are standing but that is not true. the truth is we need to prepare ourselves that is what the great abraham lincoln told i will prepare my time will come that means we have to be ready when the right time come we need to have the ingredients we need to have the tools we need to be ready to play the game so this we need to have the skills we need to have the practice to be on top of the game not only just to play the game to be on top of the game having been said all these things miss suini was kind of explaining about a brief introduction about myself it is true i started as a management trainee about two decades back more than two decades in 2000 actually to be honest then i had been working in research education private sector public sector international organization you just name it in in the country out of the country etc what i have seen wherever i go i have been i have been in different part of the world but what i have seen is it's all it's all about how we plan ourselves to live our life whether it's sri lanka or london or wherever i don't know australia or wherever it is all it matters how we Yeah, I'm sorry. So my, <clears throat> I was told today to introduce about the university. Yes, my, uh, I mean, I'm sure that most of you would have done the web survey. You are quite. You would have done all the findings. Lincoln University Malaysia is operating in about twenty countries and also expanding themselves. del cells uh in many countries as a director i am also given some mandate to expand in health sciences in some of the areas in some of the countries we are expanding with branch campus operations um uh, to support 
health science education. So at present, we are operating in about 20 countries. In South African continent, we are operating in Ghana, Somalia, Lesotho, um, and then we are operating in um, uh, Egypt, uh, Nepal, uh, Italy, uh, Bangladesh, Dubai, Qatar, Oman, um, Australia branch campus is Sydney up and running now. So we have the branch campus in Sydney, Australia. And also we had approvals given for a health science school in uh, US Dallas. So likewise, and also the new, uh, new uh, we are trying to embark in Cambodia. Likewise, uh, it's uh, the education as the great, the vision of the great Abraham Lincoln. The vision stands that education should be made available and education must be accessible to all. What our vice chancellor, the president, the founder president of Lincoln, Malaysia, I must uh, quote, I must uh, quote Professor Dr. Amiya Baumik, always used to tell, there are enough institutions in the world who are engaged in providing education, in providing knowledge, in disseminating uh, training. But what matters is it has to be affordable and it has to be quality. Affordability is something that the president of Malaysia Lincoln always insist. And the availability, accessibility, if you see, in Sri Lanka, we are very keen to take this US curriculum because most of our curriculums are benchmarked with US. So uh, we do follow the US system, though it's Malaysian based. If you could see that we have taken this curricula to the rural or to interior of the country in Sri Lanka. Likewise, interior of the world, not in main cities. Professor Amiya, I respect this fine piece of gentleman for the vision because he has not kept anything for himself. Whatever he has taken, he has given it back. He has taken from where it's possible and he has given it where it's needed. Very simple philosophy and a great philosopher who follows and believes in Dr. Sami Vivekanandan and also he's a great uh, practice of many philosophy, including Lord Buddha's. So, since our reputation prevail, we have good standing in world university ranking of times ranking for quality education. We have been within 100. And also QS ranking, we have been somewhere in 250 plus, I would say. That was 2023 ranking. All this ranking, uh, education, 
talking, everything is there. But what matters is we would like to work as a family with the students. We would like to work as a family. That, that is what matters. We are a family. So I warmly welcome our students to the family of Lincoln. Why I call this as a family is because in a family, we look after each other. You feel the freedom. You don't feel like that you are an outsider. So a staff member, the faculty members, academic, non-academic, all staff put together, we are a family. So whenever you want, wherever you want, we are there promptly to help you. So feel free to be in the family so that I warmly welcome once again all the students. Though you are students, you are professionals, I know. So therefore, I know you have a lot of uh, a um, lot of thinking in your mind, you know, thinking like they are in here, you know, what to you know, what a what lot of objectives. I mean, not specific objectives, many objectives, not one. So it's a lot of um, uh, thoughts, a lot of inspirations, a lot of, uh, uh, I mean, uh, hopes, right? So I'm sure that we are there to guide you with your bachelor degree until the end. And also would like to see you securing lucrative uh, job opportunities to be great entrepreneurs, not in Sri Lanka, also in other countries. Some of, them, some of, them, some of, uh, some of you must be wondering, right? I need to go and work at a pharmacy in another country for better financial Gain. Oh, why don't you think I will run a pharmacy chain in another country? I will run, establish a pharmaceutical company in another country. I will establish a pharmaceutical manufacturing plant in another country or in Sri Lanka. Great entrepreneurship, for which you have the basic foundation, strong foundation to support this. So I will leave that to you and to the faculty members to groom you with all the spiritual gods, may bless you with the ability and the courage required to fulfill this journey or the degree program, which is about two to three years. In, in, in my opinion, it's three years. So it will take to complete, but still you will have a good qualification which you can discount with the right dosage, you should be able to create the uh, correct magnitude. Thank you very much. Uh, so I would like to add a uh, few more words. What is important is to have commitment throughout these studies, throughout this period of study. So that is the only thing required uh, there might be problems, there might be difficulties, there might be issues because it's not one or two months. We are talking about a few years. So the commitment, consistency is required to be a good, uh, to complete your program. And also, I know there are very matured academics, I can see at the uh, head table, very matured academics. But it's a journey where you start today and you might go ahead, complete your bachelor degree, complete your master degree and go and do the PhD to earn a doctoral degree. Because I see very few doctoral degree holders in Sri Lanka in pharmaceutical. So you all will be our experience. You all will uh, witness this while most of the uh, doctoral degree holders moved out of the country or busy 
with uh, ample work. So there is plenty of opportunities to grow as an academia. So that opportunity is also available. So with all, once again, good luck and thank you very much. at Spectrum Institute of Science and Technology, former program leader and senior lecturer in genetics and immunology for BSc programs, all by the Edinburgh Napier University in Sri Lanka, and also a former parliamentary officer. Currently, Mr. Chandra Taranga holds the positions as additional general manager operations in the University branch campus Sri Lanka, director Exotech Private Limited, and consulting academic advisor at the Alexion Innovations Private Limited. Over to you. Thanks, Patricia, and distinguished uh, guests, and uh, my dear colleagues, and students, and families. Actually, uh, I'm not going to talk much. But uh, as Dr. Uh, Shah mentioned, I would like to welcome all of you to Lincoln family. You have taken a uh, big step, you have taken a big decision uh, in the current situation and everything. Uh, you have decided to uh, improve your qualification, you have decided to uh, join uh, with us uh, to complete your uh, pharmacy degree. And we will do our best to let you to achieve your goals, your dreams. We will help you and we will take you forward. So be with us. And uh, from the management side, I want, I want to tell you is that like, uh, if you have any issues, if you have any problems, study or whatever, you can always talk to us. You can always talk to uh, our HOD, Dr. Kumanika. And uh, then uh, whatever uh, the uh, arrangements that we have given to you, whatever the uh, payment plan and whatever that we have given to you, we are not going to change it or anything. And if you have any issues, you can always raise it and talk to us and we will help you throughout this call. So, yeah. Then, uh, having been said that, uh, I think, uh, we can uh, move forward and just uh, I would like to congratulate again uh, uh, for your decision to take part in this week. Thank you, sir, for the delicate message. I cordially invite our guest of honor, Professor Shivanti Homer Vanya Singham, to share expertise with us today. Professor Shalomvi Homawanya Singham is an international renowned clinician scientist who is currently consultant vascular surgeon at Leeds Teaching Hospital NHS Trust, the founding professor of, of surgery at University of Warwick Medical School and University Hospitals Coventry and Warwickshire, and professor of engineering and surgery at University College London. She has published over 170 papers and book chapters, delivered more than 300 presentations and had a significant research grant portfolio with an understanding track record of national and international collaborations. She is a visiting scholar at Harvard University, the National University of Singapore, and the Indian Institute of Science. A strategic and intuitive thinker, Professor Homer Vanya Singham has actively engaged in clinical and translational research for over two decades. She has played key roles in taking bio and medtech products from concept to reality, gaining regulatory approval and actively participating in industry funding rounds. 
She's also contributed significantly to educating the generations of doctors, scientists, engineers, and maintaining a key interest in embracing and applying educational technologies in relevant fields. Professor Hovavanya Singham has led a way in assembling and leading diverse teams with a gift to inspire, recruit, and retain talent. Over to you. Thank you very much for those uh, kind words. Um, it's a real pleasure to be here this morning, and a real thank you to Chana and the team who invited me. Uh, just a little, you know, you've heard what I, where I work. Um, I was born in Sri Lanka. Uh, I studied at Holy Family Convent, and for reasons uh, of the prevailing at the time, I was uh, sort of forced to go to India and finish my high school and medical school and learn surgical training, after which I went to India. So I've been in India for 37 years now. But on every occasion, in every one of those 37 years, I have returned to Sri Lanka. And it is lovely to see some familiar faces here today. Um, Jack and I have also met and worked together sometime. Um, and the only time I didn't come to Sri Lanka was during the pandemic of those two years. In other words, I returned to India and to Sri Lanka. And in fact, I was just looking through my diary. I've been back, I was back in Sri Lanka five times. In 2019. So I've never really been very far away from this country. Um, so, as uh, I was introduced, I'm a vascular. Uh, I do a certified first in general surgery and then in vascular surgery, where I work at the Institute of Hospitals, which is one of the largest trust hospitals in the United Kingdom. We have in the city, we have 2,500 acute beds. Make, making us one of the largest trusts in Europe. I also work at, uh, at University College London, where interestingly, I'm a professor of engineering and surgery. And many clinicians say, "How? What is what is engineering got to do with surgery?" And my answer to that is, just look around the operating theatre. Every bit of the operating theatre is a feat of engineering, from the lights, the operating table, the bypass machines, the instruments. That is not biology, but that is engineering. <clears throat> so I sit in engineering, looking at the application of uh, novel and emerging engineering technologies in improving healthcare. And then I had my hand twisted some years ago by my colleagues at the University of Warwick, where there is a vibrant hospital and a very, very active university, one of the newer universities celebrated 50 years, just a few years ago, consistently in the top 10 or 20 uh, universities. But the problem was that the clinicians and the uh, university found it very hard to work together. So I was brought in there to act as a bridge to make clinicians and the academics in the university work together, and we have been very successful in that. I often uh, refer to this uh, saying from the late Nobel laureates, uh, Peter Medawar. People say, why do you do science? And in particular, my colleagues in, in surgery are always astounded that I'm so addicted to science. Surgeons tend to only concentrate on one thing, and that is the knife. But I say to them, just tell me which bit again of science has not improved or enhanced our society. I think science is the fuel that drives the engine of discovery and advances in general. So this slide is something I share with my students and colleagues from time to time, not to show that I have done it myself, because that is not possible, but I call it the power of partnerships. And as you start your journey in, in this degree, it is never too early to start forming partnerships. I supervised my first PhD student when I was a registrar. So I was a <coughs> consultant, I was a surgical registrar in training, and I supervised my first PhD student, who is now a professor of uh, biology at National University of Singapore. And so I lead a lot. I say I lead, but often now I don't lead. There are people that I have trained who are far, far better than me. But we have got a number of programs in Leeds, at University College London, in Warwick, and then a number of international programs, which are growing even as I speak, all extremely well funded. 
uh, our funding today has exceeded several million pounds. And for me, the greatest joy is that some of my students have overtaken me as excellent academicians. That is the real measure of one's success, is if your student is better than you. So this has really been a great journey, and I work uh, in my international appointments with Professor George Whitesides, who's 83. He is not emeritus, he's a full-time uh, professor at Harvard. And, and, and that's the Department of Chemistry and Chemical Biology. It's really rather odd for a clinician or a surgeon to be in these departments. At the Indian Institute of Science, I lead a program on materials in medicine, looking at the application of new materials in medicine. And at the National University of Singapore, a number of programs that are still growing. So why do we do this? I think it's an inherent desire of every individual to pursue excellence. I don't think anybody really strives to be mediocre. Everyone wants to be excellent. And what is excellence? It's excellence in scholarship, in what you do with students, in the way you think. A little beef that I have is that I think people don't think enough. They are completely and utterly addicted to their devices. They do not spend any time thinking. Every week when I go from Leeds to London, I get into the train, I don't drive. And people say, oh, you must be opening your computer and working. And no, I don't. If I've been operating all night, I sleep for the first hour. And then I look out the window and I get my best thoughts between somewhere between Grantham, which is in the Midlands, and King's Cross in Leeds. And I actually think of research projects, hypotheses to test. So I urge you as students, technology is great and it has helped all of us, we can't deny that. But please spend some time thinking. Cultivate excellence in thinking. Work with your peers and mentors. China has just said that you know, you're, you're surrounded by a group of people who want to help you. So actively work with them. Engage with your community. Sri Lanka has been to you know where, and people think I'm back, but I don't think we're back here. So engage with the community, and that is one of the reasons I keep coming back to Sri Lanka. There are a number of societal needs that you can address as you go through your student days. <coughs> and look at how you can excel in pharmacy education, training, and innovation. So this is something again I show my medical students called All Its Wheel of Excellence, which has been around for many, many years. And you can see there are certain elements, but right in the middle is belief and commitment. You have to believe in yourself, and you have to be utterly um, committed to what you're doing. And there, then there are lots of other things around. Uh, well, lots. So what can you, today, where do pharmacists sit? It's actually very interesting because we work very closely with pharmacy in our hospital. We have a pharmacist on the board round every day when we go around with our patients. There is a vascular pharmacist who comes with us. And I have to honestly say that that vascular pharmacist is such an integral part of the daily board round and we learn so much from her. So today there are medical counselors, they are educators, they are advocates of their profession. They're integral members of the healthcare team, and I really mean that they play a very central role in the delivery of healthcare. They are such trusted and respected individuals and so accessible. And they directly influence the outcome of the patients. What they tell us and how they help in the management of patients has a very positive impact on how that patient does. Yes. So what are the opportunities that you can look forward to when you graduate? There are a number, and I have only listed a few here. Many, many become hospital pharmacists, others work in the community. We also now have a breed of pharmacists with a special interest. So we have had uh, specific pharmacists in cardiology, nephrology, transplantation, because each of those patients have very specific needs. You can also in England now become a consultant pharmacist, fully fledged consultant. In these, in these disciplines. They play a huge role in research and development, in uh, involvement in clinical trials. When a company brings a new uh, compound to market or a medicine, the pharmacist is part of the clinical trials team. 
and of course in the innovation and adoption of new technologies. So I want to just leave you with this thought, and that's of course Philip Nelson Mandela. Um, and he said, you know, we think that we find the hill, and when you get to the top of that hill, you find that there are the hills. But you don't have to worry about too much if you are well equipped with the ammunition of one particular thing. It is, I think, the most powerful weapon that we can use to bring about change in ourselves, in our families, in our societies, and the wider world. So I once again thank you for the opportunity to be here with you. But I also want to specifically wish each and every one of you students as you start this journey the very, very best. And I hope that you will pursue the excellence of your profession. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ron, for your wise words, and we truly uh, appreciate your presence with us today. I'm humbly honored to invite our chief guest for this inauguration ceremony, Professor Varanja Kararatna, to address the gathering. Professor Kararatna graduated from the University of Colombo with a first class in class in Bachelor of Science with honors in chemistry in 1978. He earned his PhD in synthetic organic chemistry from the University of British Columbia, Canada in 1985 and joined the Department of Chemistry, University of Pennsylvania as a senior lecturer in the same year. Professor Karatna was an awardee of several postdoctoral fellowships and he served as a visiting scientist at many prestigious universities and institutes, including Opusana University in Sweden, Mahidol University in Thailand, and University of British Columbia in Monaco, Canada, and University of Kansas in USA. He has received numerous awards, including the Knight of the Order of Academy France, awarded by the government of France. He was a chairman of the Intellectual Property Advisory Commission in Sri Lanka from 2019 to 2022. He has supervised more than 12 MPhil and 24 PhD research students and has authored more than 170 research articles, books, monographs, book chapters and is the inventor of 17 patents. Currently, he is the Vice Chancellor of Sweden Academy, Chairman of National Science and Technology Commission of Sri Lanka NASDAQ, and a Council <coughs> Member of National Research Council. Over to you, sir. University uh, Pharmacy Program in the Department Monica, Dr. Monica Samanti, the National Group Manager of the LinkedIn University, the country director, who just spoke to us. Uh, and most importantly, Dr. Sam Delcar. I'm a, uh, by training, I'm organic chemist, a synthetic organic chemist. So if I did join, the academia, I would have probably worked in a, as a researcher in a pharma company somewhere, which I did. But I almost did. My association with the pharmacy or pharmaceutical uh, developments was soon after my PhD uh, from Canada, University of British Columbia. I joined the startup company, was sending one drug for macular degeneration to the approval. In fact, that Later became the first drug ever to be approved in Canada. So after the drug got approved, and uh, told my wife, Look, I feel like I've gone to moon and come back because the life of a chemist, you hardly get to see the drug improved by the media. So let's go home now. Uh, there is really no point in staying anywhere else. So that's in 1996, I decided to come back. And the reason for coming back. Not a good year to come back, as you remember. Some of you are old enough to remember, many of you in the audience are probably not. It was a time when the, the, the war was raging, uh, bombs were going all over the place in Colombo. But we remember, because uh, finding of anything in life is critical. The country was in bad shape, but for me, that was the opportunity to come back. So I did that. Wanted to play a long innings in Sri Lanka. 
that was my most important objective and striking really have you seen that they want to back rolling grid for the military uh done a lot and uh, later uh while working in Kerala yeah with that the Sri Lanka inter-academy knowledge of county now as the vice chancellor of the academy for 40 years uh responsible for its uh major innovations and uh so on so my second experience in pharmacies and i i uh, i was a visiting fellow in industrial cancers in pharmaceutical chemical departments where i had a first-hand view of what defa pharmacy doctorate or doctors do in the pharma industry because they join not research per se generally the world they join the what is called are they join the deal which is developed so for a development pharmacist or pharmacy phd uh your entry into the development means that in the pipeline of earning money you are closer to money than researchers are researchers are far remote from their money is uh you are in the development you that means a drug is being considered for clinical trials uh so you're a little closer to money that doesn't mean that it will be approved but uh, it's a little closer to money so i had a first hand view of what the farm students do uh as opposed to myself who would ideally fit into the research in farms so those are my experiences in in local pharmacy uh uh feel and uh, since many of you are or all of you are firstly involved or registered for undergraduate degree and some of you are probably joining with your level result and maybe the equal portion of it is larger number join to work as pharmacists for the ESC by following this program are in the way you go back to what an undergraduate degree means for you in your life that gives you in your life the data research data suggests that people with undergraduate degrees over a life time earn a way more money than people without it that's a fact so if you earn more money as in the undergraduate degree than people without an undergraduate degree that means you get married better you have better families you would have a better lifestyle that's what income means in the modern context of the world and generally the types of jobs would be higher or with an undergraduate degree would be more satisfying than the ones people get hired without an undergraduate degree and thirdly with an undergraduate degree your job security is going to be more than without people without undergraduate degree so there are major benefits of doing an undergraduate degree So that's one thing. So you register for pharmacy, which is a critical important uh, clinical pharmacy, as Shanti just mentioned. Uh, you know, you would be working with medical doctors. She said they have a, a pharmacist in the boardrooms, clinical pharmacist, or you could be in pharmacy research. You know, without a BSc, uh, you can't do a BSc. That's what I would do. You can't do a masters. So if you want to do a master's or a PhD, you need a PhD. So that's another reason why you need an undergraduate. It's very important in the modern context. And uh, if you can get into research pharmacy, you can get into uh, pharmacy administration, you can get into community pharmacy. Uh, there is a, a whole different branch of uh, you know addiction. Let's see if you can get into addiction pharmacy. There are specialist pharmacists who who work in that area. They maybe not all of it is available in Sri Lanka, but certainly many of you will probably end up in other countries as well. So those are areas that you can can consider. Uh, there's another thing. I'm slowly moving on uh, from basic undergraduate degree to pharmacy degree. So the pharmacy degree, I think it's a very satisfying. Degree to have because you are a healthcare provider. Basically, that's what it is. So, which means you help to, for people to live better lives, healthier lives. You assist. You're part of the whole integral part of the whole equation of serving sick people, which many consider to be a 
wonderful thing to do. Uh, as a scientist, uh, I'm far removed from all that, but you would uh, be closer to people who are sick and helping them, which is a, which is a very noble uh, thing to do. Uh, but don't forget, uh, I want to touch on something else now. It relates to all undergraduate degrees, which is uh, the oncoming artificial intelligence revolution. Are you told? Or we are told that by 2025, this is a probably a, a truth to believe. There was a there was a computer now when Gary Kasparov beat uh, was beaten by the Deep Blue computer program developed by IBM in the early 1990s. That was the reactive type of computer software. They could only react to it. It was in stage one. Today. And of course, you know, Gary Kasparov cried when he was beaten by the deep blue computer because he computed that he was beaten in chess by the computer. But the computer had no need to be congratulated for beating Gary Kasparov because the computer had no emotions or feelings that it needs to be congratulated for beating a human being at chess. But today, you don't know. Chat GPT, you would Google this. There's a program that has just been talked about chat, C H A T, GPT, capital GPT, software. It's an interactive uh, essay writing program, uh, which, if you give it a few keywords, it will produce a 10 page document. And it will, uh, I mean, go and behold what will happen in plagiarism. Uh, Software, maybe you know, maybe keep redefining things. And we always talk of you know, human rights for human beings, for humans. We talk of human rights. Very soon, we have to talk of human rights for AI and machines, which we haven't even begun to talk. We are still worried about the, the human rights violations taking place across the planet. So, chat GDP and other programs. By 2025, it's estimated that all online content, 90% of the online content, will be AI generated. That doesn't mean your online content will look any different from what it is, but it's just a source of generation that's going to be different. Right? So, this is an inevitable revolution that comes and it has affected every facet of our existence as humans. Obviously, no exception to this. Pharmacists will use AI in the next decade, decade and a half, to regulate and do, although you may not get a training in AI and AI applications in your degree today, but you must keep your ears and eyes open for the oncoming revolution. And your profession will change your lifetime as a result of artificial intelligence related issues. Sri Lanka, although you think no, it's not going to happen in Sri Lanka because we'll still be writing in little bills and the doctors will send it to the pharmacy. I don't think so. They are part of the global community at the very least. And if the monument doesn't go to the mountain, the mountain will go to the mountain. And technology will come to pharmacy centers uh, inevitably. So, how you manage your patients, how you deliver to your patients, online delivery of medicines, so the guy who really puts the medicine into the envelope and the box doesn't have to be a pharmacist and the person who delivers the drug. All you have to do is to make sure what goes into the envelope is the right dosage, right medicine for the right duration. So the pharmacy will change dramatically in time. I know there are only probably a very few teachers here. I want to say a few words for teachers as well. Teachers who engage in freshman classes. That's a momentous occasion if you look at it. Teacher who has never met this student or student who has never met this teacher for the first time people meet. Now, this is a this is a, a, a purely a human act. Only human beings do that. 
we interact for the first time in an obstructive way with another human that we have never met before. Animals generally don't tend to do that. So this is that interaction enables the student to gather the knowledge that the teacher will give you and the teacher to learn from the student as well. And I still teach organic chemistry. And I never stop learning from my students. When I see the answers some of the students give making molecules, truly I feel shocked and fascinated. How did I think about this? I've been teaching synthesis for the last 35 years. And I still see way more creative synthesis than I could do. Written on a piece of paper by a kid, the fraction of my age. So teachers benefit hugely from teaching. So this, I told you, is, is, is probably one of the traits, human traits. This ability to interact and share information and share knowledge and to elevate the standard of another human being who was positioned better than where he or she was is probably one of the reasons why we moved out of the cave and became agricultural society. Because in the agricultural society, we needed to tell our fellow human beings how to grow better crops, how to get a better yield. So that human interaction is what it recreated between the freshman teacher and the student. For the next three years, your teachers will then teach you things that benefit you immensely, will change your life forever. Uh, although looking back, that's also another human trait. You don't necessarily thank our mentors. Uh, don't need to thank your mentors. did the job, they liked it, they enjoyed it, you move forward. But that interaction and, and Transferring of knowledge that the teachers do for you will change your life forever. Now, finally, I want to talk about that you will get a BSc. Right? Remember, it's the university that gives you BSc, but really, it's society. It's a society at large that gives you BSc. And the university is part of that society. So, then the society, let's take it there, bestows a BSc to you a privilege. How the number of humans on the planet, the people who have undergraduate degrees are less than people who don't have undergraduate degrees in the entire past. So it's a privilege to have been given a BS. But we must remember privileges don't come without responsibilities. You're responsible for holding that privilege that's given to you to serve the community that gave you that privilege. Or it's advancement and better. So that's what you need to understand. Privileges don't come without responsibilities. I don't just grab my certificate and run where I go. You must think the value of what you've been given, right? You've been, you will one in three years or so, you'll be uh, elevated to the standard of a special human being. Right? That's sometimes you get. Uh, the authorities, as you are a special human being, and that's what we, we will be. So I, I want you to understand that and to and to wear that responsibility that you will face as a badge of honor when you graduate from this place. And finally, remember, as as now we are all undergraduates, uh, and for the moment, some of you may work yet, start study, others may not. But uh, one of the Beauties of being an undergraduate student is that you are judged as a group. You are not judged as an individual. The whole the girl freshman uh, BSc class of pharmacy student that take the university this year. That's how we are described. Right? No one recites the names of everybody in there. So it's a what an immunity for the next three years. You're immune to social pressures for the next three years. But after the three years, when you leave this place with a degree in hand, the society will judge you individually. Not going to judge you as a group. So you need to be prepared for that. From that point onwards, until your last day on this planet, you'll be judged as an individual, not as a group. So the undergraduate experience is a unique, special experience that lasts but three to four years. And after that, Never, ever get that unique uh, opportunity.
opportunity to be in a comfort zone of your own. So all the very best to you. Uh, and uh, you know, uh, uh, being an educator, of undergraduate students, besides being an educator, of postgraduate students for a long time. And uh, I never get tired of wishing the first year batch good luck on the journey. Right? Now, finally, uh, the most important reason up here, uh, I want to tell a little story on that, is five years ago when I was uh, 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 director of research at Syntec, Institute of Nanotechnology, uh, uh, a lady uh, came to me and said she would like to do her PhD. Uh, she was accomplished organic chemist, having done a master's degree in nanotechnology chemistry and she wanted to do PhD. As part of her program, she uh, worked on advanced pharmaceutical ingredient synthesis, ABI synthesis, and she modernized the, the synthesis of liver thyroxine, a much needed drug in Sri Lanka. Because thyroxine synthesis, although future patients who have thyroid issues take this, thyroxine synthesis, the, the, the industrial synthesis, is a pretty ugly, inefficient synthesis. The overall yields are pretty poor. Uh, some of the reactions, you don't know whether they even work, but you're given a drug, so obviously you think they work. So that girl's, one of the jobs she did was to modernize the synthesis of thyroxine with the overall yield uh, exceeding 50% overall. It is a remarkable achievement. Work was published. One of her second projects was to synthesize beclometasone analogs and modernize the synthesis from what is in the industrial practice today. Uh, and eventually she went on to uh, obtain a PhD. And she's done other than your end of your program, Dr. Kumarika. So at least the Lincoln University pharmacy program is off to a great start. Great to be a person like that because uh, you know she is a specialist on synthesis of APIs. And what uh, a better mentor to this program have that. The reason I, I uh, most important reason I came here today is uh, she was my student and I voiced her creation. So when the students tell you, please come, they go. Thank you very much. All the very best. Thank Thank you, sir, for the wise words. Indeed, you made my uh, talk very short, introducing Dr. Parker. Dr. Parker graduated from the University of Delhi in 2004 with a special degree in chemistry. In 2011, she completed a postgraduate diploma in the UK, and then she earned a medical degree in 2015 from the University of California under the supervision of Professor Tarantama. She joined the Sri Lanka Institute of Nanotechnology, Slaytech, as a research scientist in 2016, she completed a PhD in nanoscience and nanotechnology from Tech Academy. Dr. Malika has received numerous awards, including the Sahab Hussein Memorial Award for pioneering a novel research area. She has authored over 15 peer reviewed publications in national medicine and was instrumental in establishing Sri Lanka's first GLP accredited synthetic medicine. Medicinal Organic Laboratory. Her major research interests include medicinal chemistry. Currently, she is the head of the Department of Pharmacy, Lincoln University, Branch Campus, Sri Lanka, Director of Science Sri Lanka Private Limited, and Chief Operating Officer at Molecular Private Limited. Over to you, Ms. Dr. Malika Samathi, to give us the program brief of pharmaceutical programs. I would like to recognize our distinguished guests who honor us by their presence today. Greetings, our invitees, Dr. Garanja, Dr. Shiranti, Ms. Daji, uh, Mr. Jailanka, uh, Dr. Sriboy, uh, Dr. Rasha, Mr. Uday, and Mr. Tamil.
to can be a academics that uh, the professor, associate professor, assistant professor, or you can be a pharmacist, hospital pharmacist, clinical pharmacist, retail pharmacist, and marketing representative, marketing executive, etc. And you can be a researcher in R and D research uh, uh, in clinical sessions and pharma pharmaceutical industry. And you can get a government job in drug uh, controller, drug inspector, such as and regulatory affairs in Myanmar and other legal councils. And also you can be a production manager, manager, political control, consultant, etc. So communication uh, manager, editor, uh, writer, scientific writer, etc. So I would like to find out. Above all, I dare you to do both so the world might be great. So thank you. Thank you, Dr. Monica, for that brief. Uh, I now take the opportunity. Dr. Roshan? Yes, uh, am I am I good to go, Ms. Sweeney? Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. I was waiting. Uh, sorry. Um, I think uh, I was told that Dr. Srimoy is, uh, is actually not in KL. He's traveling out of KL uh, to participate for a conference tomorrow, but he uh, Initially, he promised me that he should be able to join this session um, somewhere, uh, somewhere from wherever he is. But um, he has just informed, and he has sent an email to Dr. Upamalika since I think she has not seen it. He will not be able to uh, join through the Zoom, uh, so that he has sent a message to be read uh, to be read to the students. So I'll I'll take this opportunity to read out the message which is sent by Dr. Sri Moy, the Deputy Dean of the Faculty. I am I quote, I am honored to be part of this program as I believe it's sharing knowledge with the students in a multi-directional format in which the students also share their experience with the lecturer and the outcome synergies that the progress of both students and lecturers. We are ranked among the top universities in Malaysia as well as in Asia, and the credit goes to the relationship between the students and the academics. We are a family. We are a family. In our upcoming lecturers, lectures, lecture sessions, 
we will discuss many important aspects of the program each modules to be delivered uh, by the experts by the experts and professors and also the relationship with, i do strongly believe the relationship between the students and the faculty for a better academic outcome finally welcome to lincoln university thank you and see you soon unquoted thank you it is from dr sri mori thank you ms soini you may continue thank you sir Permanent 
the program in Sri Lanka. The next system was allow pharmacists to upgrade their communication, give them to opportunities. But as you know, the resource is limited in the government university system. Therefore, we have to consider alternatives. That's when the Lincoln University system came. I might have remembered how certain donors had on the abolish private medical education in Sri Lanka. But we welcome private education. We want pharmacists to do, get their qualifications upgraded. We want to give everyone to everyone an out. Because we aim to uplift, uplift the profession. Our objective is to make pharmacy service to us to a degree level in 2030. We strongly believe that the pharmacists should be degree holders and we are working towards it. But offering just a degree would not serve our objectives. It's very really important to preserve quality of the degree and standard of the degree. Therefore, we are keeping close with the curriculums, the exam procedure, and the teaching and learning procedure. If any misconduct, any incompatibilities we are detected, we will strongly intervene and we hope, hope, believe that we have a right to do so. We have a responsibility to do so. We believe that as well as administration of the Indian you as students realize this responsibility and work towards your need. We appreciate in interesting to update. We appreciate your hunger to knowledge. We appreciate your commitment and wish you all the very best for your future. Thank you, sir, for kind words. Now the platform is open for question and answers regarding the program. The questions could be asked in all three languages. So you can go ahead. Thank
decisions for me today. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Please let me know with LinkedIn colors. Thank you and stay safe.